Welcome to Scottish Van Trips. This week we're going to give you a tour of the Auto Trail Adventure 65 as requested by so many subscribers. Thanks very much guys, thanks for your patience. As you know we've been touring Europe recently, I've got a couple of videos of that coming up. We've got another Scottish Highlands uh, trip coming up as well which is in the editing suite but I wanted to quickly get this one out because everyone's asking to see the 2023 model so let's have a quick look round. So as you can see with the 2023 model there's some changes going on up here with the head unit, the camera. I don't know if it was like this on the old one but it can certainly stay on all the time while you're driving, that's pretty cool. Voice only works when you've got Apple CarPlay on. I'm not going to stick the radio on because it's an absolute nightmare to get off again. Just to say, this is the Xcent F275. I'm not going to put the nav on because you'll see exactly where I am, but I really don't like this unit. We've had the van for three months now and I have to say it's the worst sat nav I've ever used in my life. It's buggy, it's laggy, coming through Dartford. Uh, going across the cross in there, it completely lost us. We didn't know where we were going. In Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg, it completely lost us several times and had us trying to take uh, various different side roads. It was an absolute nightmare. I really don't like it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but the unit needs replaced. Uh, either that or it needs mothballed and I need to get something to stick on in the dash up here. I know that Garmin do a camper van unit and that might be the solution. Anyway, don't want to waffle on too much about this. I'll do a separate video about the XF275 and my absolute loathe for it. That's probably a whole video. Controls for the heating in terms of fan, all manual I'm afraid, there's no climate control here. There is aircon and you can see with the funky dials you've got a, a little nudge there that tells you which one you're on and whether you've selected air intake or external air intake. Usual switches here. If you're watching this video and you've got one of these, what on earth does this do, this demister? There's no back windows. There's no uh, heated front windows, so maybe it does the mirrors, I'm not entirely sure. Warning lights, lock button and the skid control on and off, that's not a button. As you can see we've got the DSG model, this gearbox is absolutely incredible, I love it. Absolutely no doubt this is fantastic. We've got a couple of USB sockets over here, so you've got the USB-C and then the, is it USB-A that one I think? You've got 12 volt socket there. Not really used this in the front, but I'd imagine if I was sitting working, it might be useful to get my laptop switch in there, which I'll show you later on. Over here, you've got a cooled glove compartment here with a couple of cables. You do have to plug your phone in if you want to do any updates uh, or if you want to use the Android system on this absolutely awful F275. Uh, as you can see, it comes with CarPlay. They reckon it's got an Android link system again I absolutely detest it. It's the worst system known to man. Uh, one of the reasons for that is because what it does, it just mirrors your screen. And if you've got this 1970s pop-up phone holder on, uh, which again is okay, but let me just get my phone. Is there really any need for this huge device just for a tiny phone? I mean, I've got a Samsung Galaxy, you know, the latest one, it's pretty chunky. And what you can also see here when you're driving, let me just hop over to the driver's seat. When you're driving, this is my view. So then if you've got your sat nav on, the entire top of the screen is cut off by this thing here. So that's pretty useless as well. Now I don't want this to be a negative video because the van is brilliant, but <laughs> I am focusing on the F2 and 5 as a, as a bugbear. The, the screen link, the reason that's rubbish is because if you've got your screen like this on this 1970s phone holder, uh, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get this little strip of vertical image from your phone. Now what's the point? The phone's there. Why would I also want to see it there? No idea. Hold on, let me just turn my phone to landscape. Oh yeah, it doesn't work because the phone holder won't fo hold it in landscape mode because actually that could just close. So what's the point? Again, bit of a bugbear with this, but hey ho, that is where we are with it. There is another little glove box under here, which uh, plenty of storage room. I should probably be using that mic. Down the sides of the chair, I don't know if you can quite see that, but there's some pockets there which are really useful. Uh, cup holders, phone holder, again, let me just demonstrate, you can bung your phone in there. But look, it's in the vertical orientation again, so screen link is useless, unless you want to look at a vertical screen just below your vertical screen. Let me grab the keys and start this up.
but on this head up display here, this uh, unit here, you can see a whole load of information about your trip. In this case, this is our last trip, which was down through Europe, and we travelled 1,484 miles. Pretty cool. So it's got trip distance, all that kind of thing, speedometer. If you hit OK, you can change that to kilometres an hour, but you do have to do that every time you switch off the van. There's a setting in the settings menu, you can actually change it permanently to kilometres per hour until you come back from your trip. We've got your ad blue level. I was quite surprised. We've done uh, 3,156 miles. We've already had to top it up once. Uh, quite surprised by that. We've got service uh, level, oil level, uh, temperature, oil life, which is your service uh, history in terms of your time to service, and battery charge, which is mimicked up on the control panel. Um, so all very useful stuff. There's a whole bunch of other stuff I'm not going to go into in here, but you've got vehicle setup and stuff like that. Uh, you've got your fuel gauge also. Don't know if you know this, but I'll try and zoom in here. Where the petrol pump symbol is, below that there's an arrow on the left to say on any vehicle, just about, that uh, your filler cap is on the left. And then uh, we've got daytime running lights and normal lights, which I've just turned my normal lights off. Over here, you've got the controls and selector button. You've got answer and hang up on calls and voice activation. But again, I've not got an Apple, so that one doesn't work. Um, over on the right hand side you've got your uh, speed control, uh, your cruise control, sorry. Um, so the usual, that's on and off, that's cancel, that's your speed limiter. You can resume your last setting and you can increase and decrease. Instantly, if you tap this button, it increases in increments of 1 miles per hour. If you hold it, it increases it in increments of 5 miles per hour. Same with the decrease button. Over here, let me just see if I can get to this. You've got a handy little set of buttons back here, and these control radio channels, volume, and mute, and the same on this side. I think actually these flip the channels and uh, answer calls, I think, and I think this one is your volume button, um, I can't quite remember. Down the side there, you've got an adjustment for your lights, obviously if you're carrying a weight on the back or you're heavy in the rear end, you can adjust the light pitch, uh, you've got your... Uh, fog light and your auto start stop on and off button little shelf there and on the adventure you've got a little gauge here when you turn the engine on it tells you how much gas you've got left uh, we were told on handover that uh, the guy would be very surprised if we got through filling up an lpg tank this year as you can see we've done one trip to europe and a couple of trips up north and actually, I would say that's at the stage where I'd be one to look to fill it up, given the lack of LPG stations around Scotland and around this area in East Lothian. So we're only on three out of about seven or eight uh, dials there. Incidentally, I hope you can hear me okay. I am uh, flying through this and I am sticking the camera in all sorts of weird places. So hopefully the volume's okay. Uh, let me just go over to the driver's side door here. There's a couple of controls for you. Um, you've got a lock and unlock feature, windows obviously, and this mirror control is four-way. Uh, what I mean by that is you go left top and bottom and right top and bottom, and that controls your little blind spot mirror here and upper mirror, and the same on the other side of the van. What else have we got? Door pockets down there, nothing too exciting there. It comes with a carpet, which we've put down in the front but not in the back. We haven't put those carpets down. Um, swivel chairs, these are brilliant. Um, to be honest, I very rarely swivel the driver's chair, although it is handy for sitting and working at that table there. But to swivel the chair, it's as simple as pulling that lever and spinning the chair. Very, very straightforward, very simple. Uh, you want to just make sure that when you put it back in, it clips back into place. Uh, the arms on the chairs adjusted with this little uh, dial there. Uh, you spin the dial one way and it gets higher, you spin it the other way and it goes lower. Great. Great system there. You've got all your uh, interior light controls there. In the uh, sun visor, you can see I got a couple of stickers online. I've not stuck them on, I've just stuck them into the, the little plastic holder there. Um, let's go out this way. I'll stick the control panel on, get some light on the situation. So you've got the main on off button, you've got the rear lights there, you've got your water pump. And you can see here, this gauge tells you on whichever thing you're on there. So uh, actually, I think that might just be the power. Uh, this cycles through your waste, water tank levels. So you've got 50% fresh and zero waste. Incidentally, waste goes zero to 100, as in it's either zero or it's 100. There's no in between. So that's 
not the best, but you get a feel for it. What I tend to do is I'll fill up fresh, empty waste, and then I just gauge it on what the fresh is sitting at, which is in increments of 25%. You can see here we're on leisure battery, the time and the exterior temperature. Um, you can select all through these. You can see interior temperature 19, humidity 74%. That's adjusting the clock, control panel, and uh, leisure battery is sitting at 12.3 volts. Um, it's quite low actually considering I've not been using the van recently and it's sitting charging on solar panel. We've got a couple of light switches here which control this light bar here and these LED lights here. The heating system, come back here, we've got hot water and heating. You just simply press it to increase it and select whether you're on gas or electric. I'm sure you've seen this on other videos but the electric has three power outputs and that's depending. Some campsites in Europe operate 5 amp systems whereas in the UK we tend to operate is it 16 amp um, so you can go full power. What I would do is bang it on full power and if it blows you know you have to turn it down. Um, I was told at handover to bang the gas on at the same time to get maximum efficiency to heat it up as fast as possible. It's very efficient on gas and you won't use too much, so that's an option. Um, what I was meant to say actually is here's the Cab Plus 2023. This is one of the main differences in the Adventure 65 that you will have seen that's different to other videos. What it comes with is a bit more headroom here. I've heard that people with the older 65 bang their heads getting in and out, but as a result, you've lost a bit of storage space for jackets and bedding and cushions and stuff like that. I do feel like this is a bit of a waste of space. Would I feel the same way if I was banging my head every two minutes? I don't know. Um, this is a bit of a mess. I'm sorry. We've got back from our trip. I'm trying to just do a quick video without uh, a massive tidy up. So as you can see, what have we got in here? There's not a lot. So a couple of maps of Scotland and a whole load of receipts from all the different campsites and things we were at in uh, Luxembourg, uh, Netherlands and Belgium. And then in here, I've got some bike gloves, which I was using to take the bikes on and off the van with. And actually I need to move this as a Bluetooth speaker, which I keep in the van for sitting in the summer and enjoying some sun and some music. Um, over here, you've got a table which goes up and down, very easy to adjust. Uh, and again, I'm sure you've seen this on other YouTube videos. If you're researching this van, you've probably come up against quite a few of them. Uh, but all you need to do is simply take the weight off the, the leg pull this back and that will then drop down very very straightforward very simple and it clips into place there so it gives you a bit more room to be honest i rarely have that down the reason being you then can't lift the seats up that's a bit of an annoyance uh, so let me just pop this table back up again why would i lift the seats up because you've got some wonderful storage down here so the only thing we've got in here at the moment because i have Giving it a little tidy is just a collapsible bucket which we use for a bin or to take the dishes to the um, wash up on a campsite. What else have we got? Up here in the corner you can see we've got two USB ports. One I seem to have pretty much permanently attached to my 3 4G dongle. This cost me about 10 quid a month and it's unlimited internet. What I didn't realise is that is only in the UK and when you go to Europe you're limited by 12 gigabytes. And I've got a 9 year old and a 12 year old which means that by day 2 you're looking for internet because 12 gigabytes is nothing nowadays. In terms of storage, we've got some cupboards which have still got some stuff in there from the trip, <laughs> mainly sweets and rubbish. When we were on our trip, I wish I'd actually done a video then, this was uh, full of foodstuffs and bits and bobs for going on the trip. Uh, just above the head here, this is how you get into the pop top and this is a great system as well i really like the neat and tidy way this is all put together uh, in terms of the ladder there's a simple bar there which you just uh, take again you have to take the strain of the ladder off it and you just lift it up and um, it's got a little padded bit on the top of the ladder there to stop it from rattling and making noise i'm not going to put the top pop top up just now actually shoulda i'm doing a review video i probably need to i'll come back to that in a second okay over into the galley now so we've got an extendable worktop here which is absolutely fantastic really great thing to have and uh, we literally use it every time we're cooking let me just swivel this seat around as well when you're cooking or when you're watching someone cooking you can stick this extendable worktop up uh, one word of warning, don't put a lot of weight on this. We had an accident after only two weeks in the new van where my son uh, went to lean over to pull up the blinds, put a little bit too much weight on this and the whole unit just came crashing off the side, tearing a hole in the side of the unit. So we've had to have a repair done already. Not the best. Um, if you put your hands under, let me just show you. You can see here, uh, there's some little buttons. 
which actually just release that and uh, what you do is you just apply the pressure to both and that then clips into place. Down here we also have a three pin uh, socket which will work if you're on electrical hookup on a campsite but not whilst you're on leisure battery. We have a cutlery drawer which we have a full set of cutlery in uh, for the whole family. We've got other bits and pieces for cooking. Um, here we've got a long thin cupboard which is very unusual. You can get a box of cereal, a chopping board and a couple of bits and bobs but not much else in. Um, down here there is a bigger cupboard. I still need to clear this out. There's a load of rubbish in there but we essentially we keep cooking uh, plates and things in there. Ridge monkey, uh, folding kettles, stuff like that. Oven gets a bit of a hard time on the reviews from what I've seen but uh, to be honest I can't fault it. I've cooked pizzas in here. Uh, we're thinking about getting some scones made and uh, my wife loves a bit of baking so making some scones. What I will say is you'll see here we've got a little uh, oven glove, glove we've just bought from one of the home stores and I put the shelf on the lowest setting while we're traveling and stuff that oven glove in there just to stop it rattling about. Uh, same with the, the tea towel it's been stuffed in there just to try and limit the amount that these shelves move because you can hear that you probably can't hear me. Um, but that's fair enough that's expected under here there's a little bit more storage we've got a collapsible set of pots in there but not much else and in there you'll get access to all your uh, gas cutoffs if you're going through the tunnel like we just did the other week you do need to switch your gas off it is fine just to nip in there there's five dials for each of the things and you just switch them all off and uh, they were satisfied with that that the LPG was switched off moving back um, the light for cooking is very very handy let me just adjust this camera uh, the switch for that is on the side if you've got a different version of auto trail you might have one of these lights in the garage at the back uh, there's just a switch on the side there it's a it's a great light for cooking as you can see we've got a sink there and the two burner hob there again absolutely fantastic can't fault these and another three pin uh, socket there not found a use for it yet and um, over here what states this in oh, that's not too bad actually and um, over here we've got <laughs> we've got a cupboard which auto trail for 2023 have fixed the hinges on it so one of the previous complaints from the previous model was that the door was only hinged to 90 degrees and if someone went into the cupboard you couldn't go through to the back like this that's now been fixed i'm pleased to say what I would like to see in here, Auto Trail, is a light, probably with a sensor on it because you don't want to have to switch it. So let's get some sensor lights into this cupboard. Maybe it's door operated, maybe it's movement operated. If it was hardwired, that would be wonderful. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to jump onto Amazon. I'll stick a link in the video below for one of the sensor lights I've used in the VW before. Maybe stick a couple in here. It's a big cupboard and uh, that will give us a bit of light. We've got a removable uh, wardrobe bar here, which I have used a couple of times because I've been away in the van with work and um, here it comes with a great powder uh, extinguisher and you've got your leg for your table which I'll put up in just a second you've got the auto trail brolly which doesn't seem to fit anywhere else but is very handy and then if you're on the auto trail v line not auto trail adventure but auto trail v line facebook page You'll see the guy who runs that page is called Steve Dandy and he's done these amazing backboards which I'm going to show you just in a second which are great for uh, leaning on the back doors without damaging the uh, blinds and so on. We'll get to that in a second. Down here we've got the fridge. That's currently off. Oh, bottle of water. Didn't expect that. It's currently off and it's in unused mode and basically what you do is you push. I don't know if you can see. Sorry, the light's not on. Let me just turn the light on. We're going to get a blue light here. Um, essentially... This is going to beep and annoy us, but you push that dial in and then these two things retract. Let me turn that off again, sorry. So you push that thing in and these two things uh, stick out here and that stops the fridge from closing. Uh, you have got a little um, unit. Oh, I've still got some water to empty out there. Better do that. Uh, you've got a little freezer compartment there, which is very, very good. And egg tray. The shelves are all a bit weird, to be honest. I mean, I would have expected this in, in my normal fridge in the house. This is always on the bottom setting. I want to stick a big milk in there. You can't do that here because if you stick that uh, tray on the bottom setting, the, uh, the little salad drawer gets caught in the way and the door won't close. So there's a few little um, things with this fridge that I'm not entirely happy with, but we'll work it out. Let's get rid of this water. That reminds me to get rid of that. Um, okay, into the bathroom. So we've got a couple of switches here. This first switch, if you look down on the floor, you'll see it operates these lights. And to be honest, that is a great nightlight. Uh, I really like that when you're 
going to bed at night and you just want to leave a low level lighting on so when you stoat about in the morning, in the middle of the morning, looking for somewhere to go to the loo. Here we've got the bathroom light, I'm just going to pop that on, open the bathroom door. Um, so, in the bathroom, let me just see, this is a, a neat space, but as a VW owner, a former VW owner, I am so pleased with this bathroom, it's absolutely excellent. A um, few people have complained that there's no window in the bathroom, and I agree. Could do with a window, I suppose. Uh, I'd like to see what sort of waterproof blind or whatever blind system they put on there to stop the shower damaging that. Uh, I'm not sure what that looks like, but I'd be interested to see. So, in short, you've got your shower, which is a trigger-operated shower. You can pull the trigger up and slide the button along there, uh, which is this bit here. You can pull it up the way, slide it along, and that locks it on. Um, I was a bit worried when I first used it there wouldn't be a lot of water, but if that water tank's full, you get four full showers and a couple of days out of this van, no problem at all. The shower curtain, I've not hung this away very well at the moment, but there's a little um, there's a little hook on there to, to hold that back onto. Um, the one thing I always forget to do is remove the toilet roll and inevitably if you're having a shower in here you're going to soak your toilet roll, shower curtain or no shower curtain, so that's a bit of a problem, but that's my problem. Uh, toilet swivels all the way around, gives you a bit more storage space, which is great. Flush here, you just press that and that gives you a flush, however much you want. Um, that's me there, hello. Um, in this cupboard we've got... Uh, various cleaning things and stuff. I'm not going to show you the other one, but we've got toothbrushes and things like that we'll keep just permanently in the van. And in terms of the sink, uh, there is a sink kit which we have now bought. You can remove this. I don't want to do it while it's under its at least its first year warranty. I don't see a real need to do that. But essentially what happens is you will run the tap. That goes into this basin here and then you tip it up and all the water drains away into this clever system down here and away into your waste holding tank. Um, however, there's no way to get into this bit and clean it, and I'd imagine after an amount of time that's going to cause a problem. So there is a, a sink adjustment kit you can buy. You rip all this stuff out very carefully and apply this kit, and then you can remove that part of the sink for cleaning. Uh, down here, you've got a couple of uh, storage shelves, which, um, whilst being great, really, for Auto Trail, uh, what I'd like them to do is to put some kind of lip or something on these so you could actually store stuff in when you're moving around. Um, at the moment, pretty useless space because every time we're moving around, all this stuff ends up on the floor. I'm going to do some kind of adaptation to these in the near future, uh, but great, great storage solution, ideal to have. Over here, we've got your towel ring. Again, if you're in the shower, don't leave your towel there because the water will soak right through the shower curtain and soak you. Uh, so, sorry, soak your towel. In essence, bathroom, 9 out of 10. Fantastic. Okay, moving through, that's everything through to this bit. Here we are in the main compartment. Um, again, as you can see, I'm standing up. VW owners take note, standing up in your main living compartment. It's it's just, it makes such a difference. It is amazing. Now, this is the 65, not the 55. So, in essence, what that gives you is this extra bit of room here. So, the 55 ends at that cupboard there. And the 65 comes all the way back, well, as you can see, beyond that cupboard there. Uh, what difference does that make to you? Well, good question. Um, in essence, for me, that means the bed is no longer like my VW, which I had the rock and roll bed. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll see. With my wife and I in that bed, I think we had about 125 centimetres width in that bed, which is just slightly bigger than a single. It wasn't great. We were very cramped in that bed. I mean, the VW was a fantastic van. We absolutely loved it. And it was amazing to get away. But you did feel at night a little bit cosy and a little bit tight. This, however, this is a full size uh, king size bed. Is it king size or not? No, it's a king size bed uh, in the 65. So this is enormous. I mean, you can starfish out in this bed. Uh, the width, I'll put the dimensions of the bed in the rear on the screen just now. In fact, let me put the ones at the pop top up as well so you can see them. There's plenty of room. But because it's an odd size, you're shopping around for uh, sheets, you're shopping around for a mattress protector if you want one, or a, a mattress topper. I'm undecided. I reckon this needs a mattress topper. My wife thinks it doesn't. I'm a bit of a heavier, bigger guy. Uh, the other thing is, with the width of the van, you are sleeping at a slight angle. Now, uh, do I pull the bed out just now? Let's continue with the tour and I might do a separate video on pulling the bed out because there's a little trick to that to make it as efficient as possible. In terms of storage, what have we got back here? 
we've got these wonderful cupboards which go all the way along the length of the van and I have emptied these out so I'm proud to show them off as clean and empty. We've got little lights in each of the corners which are fantastic for at night. Um, what I love, again Auto Trailer really got this right, um, this gap here with these special hinges means that the cupboards are nice and lit up so if you've got that light on the light's going straight into the cupboard and you can see what a really well thought out detail and again 10 out of 10 auto trail absolutely amazing uh, so that's these little corner lights here over in this corner we've got a usb socket which gives you two usbs a 2.1 and one point something one amp so great for charging your mobile devices and stuff or is it hold on a minute where would I put my phone? Let's say I'm sitting watching TV, which is over there. I'll come on to that in a minute, but I'm sitting watching TV. I've just got a lead coming down onto the sofa and my phone's lying on the sofa. I've put one of these IKEA soap holders on the corner there. It's not the best solution in the world. What I'd like to see is some kind of storage shelf built in here, Auto Trail, somewhere to stick your phone, something like that. Again, I suppose that's going to interfere if someone's sitting here with a headroom, but there needs to be some kind of idea here. Um, like to see somewhere to put probably a tablet, a phone, something like that, some kind of shelving. Um, the seats themselves are absolutely wonderful. We've got some seat covers, but you can, you can see already there's a couple of threads coming out on these. Um, this van is only a couple of months old and there are a couple of threads appearing, so uh, I'm not sure that material's got the life in it that I would expect. Um, so we've got a couple of blankets we stick on the seats. I've taken them off just now, just for the purpose of this video. But uh, yeah, I can see that being a problem going forward. Um, over in the back here, we have got a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector in the back there. Again, I've seen some comments on forums that they're in a stupid place. Perhaps if someone's a gas safe engineer on here, they could comment. But I think there's plenty of air gap there. They're high up. They're at my head height in the van. I don't see it being a problem. Another amazing feature in this van is you've got built-in blinds, which clip on there, and built-in midgenets. What a brilliant design feature. I'm not a motorhomer, I'm used to the VW. This is a brilliant feature, I love it. The windows are all uh, lockable, and you can pop them open and lock them open. Again, I love these, these are great. You get plenty of air right through the van. And uh, last but not least in this region here, you've got the TV. You've got a little uh, pin there that you pull out, and the whole thing... Uh, it comes out of travelling mode and uh, the Avtech Smart TV, You, uh, I've got it wired back to the um, 3G, uh, sorry, 4G dongle there and as such we can get Disney, we can get Netflix, we can get Amazon, uh, we can actually use the aerial booster which is in this cupboard here. Uh, this aerial booster will give you terrestrial TV, digital TV channels uh, and it boosts the signal, the aerial being on the roof. Absolutely fantastic system, I've got no complaints with that whatsoever. Um, loving that, that's great. Let me put that back into position. Uh, what else have we got here? We have got a whole load of crap in here that I've not cleaned out yet. There's the TV remote and you've got a solar charge selector here. You can charge the vehicle battery, say you had the vehicle into winter storage. Not sure why you wouldn't use the vehicle in winter. It's got central heating folks, it's got hot and cold water. There's no reason not to use this vehicle all year round and get out and about exploring. It's a wonderful country we live in. And if you feel a bit too cold here, why not head off to Europe? It's not that expensive if you've got the time and the inclination. So anyway, yeah, leisure battery um, and vehicle battery, or you can switch it off. Again, not sure why you would switch it off. I like to trickle charge everything all the time. Uh, and this cupboard, with my little adventure cupboard, we've got a whole load of crap in there, uh, Cluedo. I'm going to move that over to a digital version actually on the app because that got very confusing when we were in Belgium. First aid kit and a few bits and bobs, scented candles for midges. Have you got one of these? I'm going to stick a link in the description complete with dead flies. Uh, this is brilliant. This... Uh, this um, Outdoor Revolution light uh, you can buy on Amazon, I'll stick a link in the description. And basically, let me try and do this without zapping my fingers and holding the thingy up. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, let me just switch, go somewhere. Where can we go? Let's go into the bathroom. Yeah, you can see that now. There we go. So it's a blue light, much like you see in the old butcher shops or in some of the uh, fresh food shops that you get around. What it does, it attracts the flies and then zaps them. This will run two or three days, uh, sorry, evenings. I always put it on the evening. Hang it up in the pop top if the pop top's up or up the front if it's not. And this will zap any flies that are hanging about in your van. So I'm going to carefully put that away. Um, that one there, you just rinse it under a tap to get rid of the dead flies, which I'm clearly still to do. Pretty disgusting. I wouldn't do it in the sink here because I don't want my tank full of dead flies, but I'll go and go to the garden hose in a minute and I'll give that a rinse off. Oh, 
One last thing I forgot here, you've got a little shelf here which is actually brilliant if you're lying in bed, you can put your phone there, use it as an alarm clock, all that kind of stuff, but what you do have is a little cupboard here with your table. Grab the leg out of that cupboard there, you're going to pull up the little cover that lives on the floor, that goes into the hole and you pull your table out of this special cupboard here. And you can see on the back of the table, I'll just bring it this way, you can see on the back of the table it's got a nice big strong uh, point to attach the, the table to. And that table there is the same as the table, other surfaces in the van. And you just plug it on, simple as that. Now what I love about this table, and I've discovered it recently, let me bring you back down here. So the great thing about this table at the moment, it's in a uh, table of four please, uh, for a meal round and you can just about squeeze a meal with a table of four, I've done it in Europe there with the family. Um, but what you can also do if you're sitting working like I have done with my laptop and I'm out and about working, you turn it this way and hey ho, you've got a table that sits right next to you, it's almost like a desk now, I can sit with my laptop. Um, what you can also do, let me just show you this quickly just now because this is great, this is the fella here. So if you go on to uh, Amazon. Um, you can get a DC car charge travel adapter and uh, I'll try and find it and put a link in the description here. This one essentially plugs into your 12 volt socket. You can fire it in because the TV is actually powered with a 12 volt socket here. There's another uh, three pin plug there. But if you're off grid and not on a campsite, you can still power your laptop with this particular unit here, this actual charging unit here. So what you do is you put that into your uh, 12 volt socket, and in this case, because I've got a USB charger on my laptop, this has got the little USB-C end to it, but you can buy them for all sorts of different laptops. So that there, when I'm working, that fires into there, and because I've got the solar panel on the roof, that will charge indefinitely and keep me going days on end. Uh, the longest I've been away in the van without connecting is three days whilst working, whilst living in the van, and it's been fantastic. Over in my little box of tricks here, I've also got an HDMI cable, which the reason for that is basically I've got a USB-C ended adapter with an HDMI slot on it just here. And the purpose of that is basically I can fire the HDMI slot in there, I can also fire the other end into the TV. Sorry, yeah, the light's terrible. I'm not sure if this will pick up. I'll try and adjust that. There's an HDMI slot there. You can see I've also got a USB, -C, a USB stick in there. But the HDMI slot goes into the TV and that allows me this to plug into my phone or my tablet and then broadcast whatever I've downloaded on my tablet onto the TV. So essentially you can get your tablet or your iPad get onto Netflix, get onto one of your favourite uh, streaming services, download a ton of stuff and then you connect that to your TV and you can watch it on when you're in a, a dodgy signal area. My wife uh, came out with this tip, I think it was from keep switching that off, one of the uh, Facebook groups. Brilliant idea. These aren't them but you get yourself a standard uh, cushion cover from IKEA uh, or the likes of many home stores are available um, and basically what you do is you stuff your duvets into them so we had a double duvet I think in one and we had a couple of singles in the other for upstairs and then you basically have uh, cushions for the back for during the day and when you go to bed you just pull your duvets out of those put them on your bed when the bed's made up and hey presto what a great system one other thing the thing I do like about this stupid F275 unit here um, I do like and I don't like is that this is connected to the leisure battery not the vehicle battery so if you wanted to listen to music if you wanted to put something on it you can actually have that on all the time it's got an auto on off function you can set it but I think the longest you can have is 60 seconds so if you're using the sat nav and driving along the road, not too great if it's switching off every 60 seconds, which it does repeatedly for me. On the other hand, as you saw just now, I've just turned it off because I switched that on a while ago to see if it needed to have an update done because it's crap. That didn't make any difference. It has the latest software, but I've accidentally left the van with that on and without on auto on off on, it will just stay on forever and drain your battery. So that's not the best thing. Oh, actually. There is a little something. Let me just stick this table away magically just now with some power off YouTube. That's 
the table away. <laughs> That's lovely. I love the editing of these things. Um, what I wanted to show you is a little bit of storage under here. That's what I did forget. So um, if you just lift these cushions, there's a there's a um, a bit of a frame underneath. As you can see, it's on struts, and there's plenty of storage under here. So I've got my chocks. I've got my power cable in a, a cheap uh, go outdoors bag that I got for about four quid. I've got a stop lock for the van. I've got my uh, food safe water hose. I've got some pegs for the awning. At the moment I'm just pegging it down, I don't have the awning kit, but I am going to buy that to hold down the awning kit. Over here is your water pump, which shouldn't be making any noise until you switch the water on and then it will be just a little bit of noise, but nothing too drastic. Uh, under here I've also got the awning winding out hole. Uh, I'm not going to do that, if you want to see that there are videos online, I think there's a rental company down south where they put the awning out, it's a very good video, very good walkthrough. Here another three pin socket, so you can see there are three pin sockets spread throughout the van. What I wanted to show you back here, these poles go, this is a change I think in the 2023 model, these poles go either side uh, into these holes here to hold the bed up, when it's extended these extend out, uh, let me just do that just now. There you go, you can see that extends out to make your bed each side. I think that's a change. But what I do like, and I don't think this is a change, is a little cubby hole here. And I've just got some blankets in here and seat covers, which I've stuffed in there. But that's great, you can get several cases of wine in there if you wanted to get those through from Europe. Not that I would ever condone doing such a thing. Um, so, that's a great little cubby hole. Uh, there's another one on the other side, and there's more storage. Let me just show you while we're here. Now, if you've opted for two leisure batteries, I want you to write in the comments right now. Stop this video, pause it, write in the comments. What's the difference with the two leisure batteries? Have you had a full winter? Um, what do you think of it? Is it recommended? Because it's obviously going to take up the space where I've got my Kadak uh, Safari Chef 30 there, which is our portable barbecue. We've got a barbecue point on the side of the van, but I'm thinking in the winter I'm probably going to need another leisure battery from the standard one that it comes with, and I might buy one of those. Bit of storage space there, and sergeant control unit there with all your fuses, and they're all marked up as you can see. Absolutely fantastic, that's great. So that's that. I think, as I say, I'll make the bed in another video, but essentially you're getting that frame, you're pulling that out there, you're putting those metal struts into that little slot there on either side, and uh, essentially this seat cushion moves over and flips and becomes the cushion for this side, the one I'm sitting on now flips to the other side, and then these back supports go into the middle to cover this section here. That's certainly the way I do it, it's the way I find most comfortable and what you'll notice is these back supports have a little angle on them to fit into the corners. That for me I put up to this end here on this small bit here and the reason for that it helps you get in and out of bed. I think that's the best way to do the bed. You may have a different opinion if you've got one of these vans, I'd love to hear from you, stick it in the comments below if you do it differently. I will do a different uh, bed video in due course but I'm not going to do that just now. Do you want to see the pop top? Stick it in the comments. Do you want to see the pop top? I might do a video on the pop top. Tell you what, I'm going to miss the pop top just now. If you want to see a pop top video, stick it in the comments below and I'll do a separate pop top video. The pop top, what's my view on it? Right, so the pop top mattress is very thin. However, it's a firm foam, if you know what I mean. But it's on Froley Springs as well. It's not uncomfortable. Would I like to see a mattress topper on it? Yeah, probably, but I'm a big guy. Uh, my kids sleep up there with no problem at all, but I ended up spending a few days in the pop top when we went to Europe to give my wife a break from my snoring, and uh, I thought it was the best bed in the van actually, to be honest, due to the amount of room. Upstairs is massive. The downstairs bed with the width, you can't sleep fully extended. I'm 5'10", 5'11", and I'm just, just about the right size for it any bigger than me and you're you're sleeping in a diagonal mode which is which is fine you know it's very comfortable the pop top however again you can starfish out you can spread out and it's got full length i mean you you're six foot odds and you can still stretch out and that it's, it's plenty of room so finding sheets again we're using double sheets up there it's not quite right i'd like to find something a little bit bigger to make life easier but but overall pop top is brilliant there's a couple of lights there's a couple of charging points it's got a point there to stop your pillows you hook it up and it's got a net to stop your pillows falling down in the middle of the night which was always a bugbear in the vw we went through three thunderstorms in our recent recent european trip and i didn't have a single bit of water I didn't have any concerns that uh, I was 
having any sort of trouble with water or anything like that and uh, it actually felt really cozy and really nice so uh, I'm looking forward to using the pop top a lot more uh, so again if you want to see a video review on that I'll do a separate one drop it in the comments I'd be happy to do it for you if there's anything I've missed or anything else you want to see drop me a comment below again and I will do a separate video um, what else can I say I suppose the last thing to do is just give the van a quick review and I'll do that now so, the Auto Trail Adventure 65 2023 model, what do I think? After, what, three months of ownership now, uh, which sounds like a good title for this video and it probably is, I reckon as a former VW T6.1 owner, here is the gen. Here's the, here's the main difference as I can see. One, you can stand up in this van. Instantly that's a winner. I mean instantly that is absolutely amazing. Uh, the amount of times we were bent over in the last uh, van trying to find things and rummaging about and stuff, banging your head, that that's an instant winner. The bathroom, amazing. Having an onboard bathroom when the kids are like, Daddy, I need to stop, I need a pee. Wow, no problem at all. I'll just pull over at the next services, I'll pull over at the next lay-by and you just go for it, son. That's not a problem at all. That is amazing. Uh, having a shower on board, that gives you so much freedom. I mean, three days in the van, going for work, being able to come home from work, dive into the shower and having a great evening in the van. The power is fantastic. Again, you're not, you're being conscious of it, but not too conscious, if you know what I mean. I mean, you can have the lights on, all that kind of stuff. And the solar charger, again, first thing in the morning, as soon as the sun rises, it's back up to full volume again and you've no issues. So that's brilliant. The vehicle itself, the Fiat, if you're concerned about driving a 6.36 metre long vehicle, we were in a bit of a hurry on several times during this European trip. Certainly on the way down to get to Eurotunnel, we had a certain amount of time and a certain amount of stops built into itinerary, and I wanted to do 70, which I found out is actually legal in this van because of its unladen weight. So you can do the normal car speed limits in this vehicle. So I wanted to do 70, uh, all the way down there on a trip from Scotland it's quite a distance so there's a massive difference in time between doing 60 on average and 70 on average on motorways so uh, I wanted to do 70 and with a bit of wind it does kind of feel like a big van so you, you know as a confident driver I've got a class C license I've no issues with that at all I've got a bit of experience driving trucks no problem with that at all however if you're a little bit less confident sticking to 60 the van is fantastic absolutely no problems at all with that so there is there is a, a slight difference in the handling between 60 and 70 mm, it's not the most comfortable at 70 in terms of a drive it takes a lot out of you uh, but at 60 it's it's wonderful no issues at all parking you do need a little bit more than a space if you're going to services you want to be going to the caravan park so places like weatherby have a dedicated caravan park uh, going up north on the a9 at uh, uh, bannockburn the services there have a truck park which you can go and park in be careful that you're not parking on a truck space some of them have a combined truck and caravan space or camper van space do not use truck spaces if it's only for trucks, please. Truck drivers have very limited, uh, they're very regulated in terms of their tachographs when they must stop. They need to stop for a break. If it's tons of camper vans using their spaces, they could be potentially breaking the law, so don't do that. Um, anyway, not a lecture video, let's move on. The tech on the van, I, I think the Ducato part is fine. As you know, uh, I've got a bit of a bee in the move on it about the F275. I know some people have managed to live with it and like it. I've tried. I'm a techie person. I love my tech. I've been through all the settings, all the menus. This thing, on this one week trip to Europe, we uh, we got sent down a dirt track. Three separate occasions, three separate days we were sent down a dirt track, which was not suitable for this vehicle. Could be a GPS error, fair enough. The GPS system is fully up to date, by the way. Uh, it also lost signal more times than I could care to count. Uh, I'm not going to go on about it again. I'm going to lose all my viewers, but uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of that at all. And I will be looking at alternatives. By the way, if you know an alternative, I'm happy to rip that whole unit out. I'm not going to do it myself. I'm not qualified, but I'll take it back to where we got the van and uh, at Marcus and get them to replace it with another unit if there's a better unit out there. What else? The, the, the auto trail part. It's fantastic. Don't forget, in a 6.36 metre van, fitting this out, the, the gear is going to be really heavy and there's a weight limit. So uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but a vehicle of this size is limited to three and a half tonnes maximum gross weight. 
Um, so if you're fitting massive chunky worktops and heavy doors and things like that, you're using up quite a lot of that space. So you'll find a lot of the materials in here are quite lightweight and that's for that reason. Uh, that means you have to be a little bit cautious. You have to be a little bit careful with uh, the amount of force that you're using with things. You have to be a little bit kid gloves. And with a couple of young kids, that means we have had a couple of accidents with things that you know, uh, we mentioned earlier about the extending kitchen unit. That's just one example. The fly screen is another where I uh, went to open it with one hand and yeah, kind of, you need to open the fly screen with two hands. By the way, there's a fly screen on the main sliding door as, all as, as well as all the back windows. Not on the front cab part for obvious reasons, but um, the one thing I did miss actually, and you'll have seen this in other places, if I just pull this up now, each of the windows has a built-in blind. So you can see behind me here, hopefully, uh, there's a blind on each of the doors and then there's one built into the front window, which I'm sure you can just see down there between the Loch Ness Monster and the uh, Highland Q. So that pulls up and it clicks into place. I don't know if you've realised this was a little sort of clicking bit where you just click it into place and that covers the full front screen. So another fantastic addition that this van is fully kitted out with blinds and the rear is fully kitted out with fly screens midgenets, so brilliant. What would I give the van? Sorry, I am waffling and it's definitely beer o'clock. Cheers, by the way. I think this van gets a strong 9 out of 10. I think it does. I think it deserves that. What would make it a 10? Would it be the GPS system? I think that could be one. Uh, I think charging leads, charging positions in the back. I think where I was talking earlier about having the USB ports, I think those ports should be above the shelf, to be honest with you, Auto Trail. Um, I want to be charging my phone at night when I'm in bed. I'm going to sleep a certain way um, in that bed, and that is side to side, because that's what the bed's built for. And I want a charging lead each side of the bed, one for each person. Uh, I would expect that as a minimum. So there's a bit of a uh, points deducted there. So what do you think of the Auto Trail Adventure 65? You're going to be buying one? Do you have one already? If you've got one already, what would you give it out of 10? Stick it in the comment below. I'd love to hear from you. If you are thinking about buying one, would I tell you to buy one? Yes. Would, am I getting any commission? Unfortunately not. What the commission I get is I'm going to get about £1.25 for making this video from YouTube. Well worth it. Uh, I'm sure for the two or three hours it's going to take me to film and edit this video, £1.25 is just reward for me. So not that I'm bitter at all. Small channels do suffer from uh, a lack of investment and that's fine. Uh, anyway, anything else you want to see, anything else you want to hear from me, stick a, a comment below. You'll find me also on Instagram. Don't post very often there, but I do occasionally share interim updates in between videos. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. I'll see you next time. Take care. Cheers. Bye.